Welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm taking a look at this. The Mr. Craft PZL37B in 172nd scale. Join me as I take a look inside the box and find out what's included. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. Before I get into the video, a quick shout out to my patrons. A massive thank you to you for all the support you give the channel. To find out what becoming a patron means and the perks it gets you, take a look at the links under the video. So today I'm taking a look at this, the Mr. Craft PZL37B in 172nd scale. Uh, just a quick apology if I say anything wrong. If I'm brutally honest, I didn't even know this aircraft existed until it was gifted to me. So I'm not particularly aware of how to pronounce it or uh, anything about the aircraft in general. So if you know anything about this aircraft, make sure you put it in the comments below and tell me if I'm saying things wrong. So I have had a look inside this box and we'll get to that in a minute. But on the outside of the box, we've got quite a nice image of the aircraft in flight over a cloudy backdrop. Down here, bottom left corner of the box, it's annotated that it has super decals included. I'm not entirely sure what that means from Mr. Craft because uh, on the P-51 Mustang that I did previously, it said the same thing and there was only two decal options included, so I'm not sure what it means. On the side of the box is a drawing uh, akin to a paint scheme uh, image of the model uh, with the colours that you could paint it. It also indicates that there are four lots of decals for four different paint schemes and they seem to be Polish and Romanian. Flip over, a little bit more information about the kit and some multilingual safety information. On the rear of the box there's absolutely nothing. So let's take a look inside and see what we get. And as you can see, everything is loose inside the box, which is not the best thing in the world, but I'll talk about that shortly. So first things first, let's take a look at the instructions. What's nice about these instructions is that they come in color. On the front here, we've got history of the actual aircraft and the same image that you found on the front of the box. Turn over the page. and it's just a fold-out booklet, one long piece of paper. On the first page we've got a sprue map. It also indicates on here which components you don't need. So this tells me that these parts can be used to make a different variant of the model and these two parts of the uh, tail are not required. The steps are reasonably well drawn. The cockpit seems to have a reasonable number of components inside. But one thing I have noticed is that there are no pilots or crew figures, which is quite annoying. So this pretty much means that I'm going to have to display it with the wheels down, as it would look a bit weird flying along without any one in control of it. And it also annotates here on the stages where you built the previous parts. So this one was built in step six, this one was built in step four, so on and so forth. And we get down here to step 12, so there's not actually that many steps, and the steps don't look to be particularly busy. They could have made it a little bit clearer by separating the different steps a bit more, but I think it's a reasonable uh, compromise, seeing as they've got quite good instructions as it is. Flip over the page. So on the back page here, we've got the painting and decal placement instructions. So we've got indicated four different decal schemes, a Russian one, two Romanian ones, and a Polish one. Down here in this little box are suggestions for the different kinds of paint that you can use. And they come from Master Paint, Humble Ravel, and other manufacturers as well. So depending on what you get locally, you can decide on what you paint it. And on the very last bit here is a sort of warranty and also you can request missing parts if you so need, which we'll come to. So, the box of bits. 
One, two, three, four, five. So I've got five sprues. And as you can see, I've got bits inside the box. So that's a bit of sprue and some parts there. And that's it. And all I need to do now is go through and find where they came from. So that one has come from here. And that one has come from there. But I seem to be missing whatever these parts were. This one seems to have come from here. So because of the decision to package these parts inside the box without a bag, I am now missing two parts, which means that I can't complete the kit. If you remember, there was a missing part application form. And I found that if you go online, you can actually request them online without having to post it off. So I did that. I sent an email, well, filled in the electronic form for these missing parts and sent it to Mr. Craft and didn't expect to get a reply. And lo and behold, they didn't reply. But about a month later in the post, this turns up. So let's take a look inside. So this sprue did not come particularly well packaged. It was in that cling film, which was then in a just a, a padded envelope. But let's just compare it to the one with the missing parts. Right. There you go. You can see that this part is present. And I'm not too worried about replacing these because I've got spare ones now. As you can see here, they are in different colors. So this spare part has come from a different batch and the plastic actually feels a little bit different but that was a pleasant surprise i didn't expect them to respond i expected them maybe if they did respond they'd only send the parts i'd requested but what they've done is they've sent the entire sprue so that is a bonus and uh very well done to mr craft for sorting that out for me so let's take a look at the five sprues that we've got. I did a little bit of research on this and the parts date to uh, sort of the mid 90s, late 80s, and was originally part of the Plastec range. So as was typical with that era, the details tend to be raised rather than recessed, but generally the molding looks to be quite good. What's particularly pronounced on some of these parts is the amount of flash, which will have to be cut off, but that's not too much of a big issue. The plastic is quite smooth and quite hard as well, so bear that into mind when you come to assemble this kit. If you remember when I built my P51 Mustang kit, I had issues with the fit, so we'll have to see how well this one goes together when I come to construct it. Let's take a look at the clear parts. The clear parts are reasonably well molded. The details seem a little bit shallow. It might be a little bit difficult to paint this without masking it. And there is a little bit of flash present, but generally it's not that bad. Mr. Craft have got a reputation for producing quite cheap kits with poor detail and fit issues but we'll have to see how this one goes together. Let's make sure I put everything back in the box so that we don't lose anything. So the last thing to take a look at are the decals. As it stated on the instructions, you get four different decal schemes. So on this one, we've got all the Romanian ones. And my experience with the Mr. Craft decals were that they were quite thin and papery and that you do run the risk of tearing them. The printing on these looks to be quite good, but again, we'll have to see how they are when they get applied to the model. On this one, we've got the Polish and the Russian insignia. I'm not sure which one I want to do yet, but I'm probably, at the moment, edging towards the remaining one because it just looks a little bit more colorful. If you'd like to see me build a certain version, make sure you put your suggestion in the comments below. So a quick roundup of what you get. Five sprues of reasonable quality, instructions that are reasonably clear and printed in color. 
and two decal sheets which feature four decal schemes which seem to be well printed but we'll have to see how they go when we apply them to the model. All of these parts are contained within a box with a reasonable image on the front. So what do I think? Well, seeing as this kit retails for about seven or eight pounds in the United Kingdom, and it's a interesting topic as I've never built anything like this before, I think it will be worth the money. So if you'd like to see me build this one, make sure you put a comment underneath the video. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the workbench again next time.